and I will tell you how it is. Okay. The role of local media. So here's no, <laughs> the and yeah, I'll, I'll I'll detail it a little bit. So like, how much should they do national news versus local oh, news? Oh, oh, right. Yeah, I had to stop. I stop. I can't click on anything from a local news place anymore. Right. Because I'll, because I'll, they I'll won't see, tell you that it's local. Or I'll not. see this this headline that is just like something just ridiculous, like you know, like toddler eaten by a crocodile. Sure. Local, it'll say like local toddler eaten by a crocodile. What? So you click on it and it's like you know Florida. Right. Why is this it's on Florida. my local? <laughs> why is this on my local news feed? So yeah, I honestly think that that drives me nuts, and I I. I guess I get it from their point of view, but at the same time, it's like, if I'm on social media, I don't need you to help me find national news. It's already there. Right. I'm following yep. those people already. Right. Only super old people get their national news from the local news places, and they are not on social media. So, to our local news people... um, if you have a social media account, do not put, quote, local news from other places other than the tri-state area. It's frustrating. It's like clickbait. Um, it's totally clickbait. Yeah, it's it abs- makes me not. Clickbait. It makes me not trust you. It makes me not want to even click on any yeah. of your stuff because it's like it doesn't even matter to me because it's not a local kid that got eaten by the right. kid or whatever. Right. But. Or, or have, For some reason, that makes me care less, even though I guess technically And, and here's what I should say. If you honestly feel like it is your duty to um, share news that is national, you need to have two accounts. Like, let's just say 14, WFIE, whatever. As an example, if you're having, like, if you have a Facebook or Twitter feed or Instagram or whatever, you should have 14 local and 14 national or 14 global or whatever. So that I can, I will follow all of you if, you know, I I will actually, I mean, I'll follow all of you, but I will follow you with that, um, that foreknowledge that this is my local news, this is my national, or this is my global. I don't want you to try to trick me into clicking on your stuff. Yeah, I'll say it's gotten worse for that for the courier because it's a lot of USA Today stuff now that (laughs) pops up. And I'll click on it, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, this is USA Today," which. And can and, we just talk about the Courier for a second? I mean, I. So the problem with that is, look, I I, I know some of the people at the Courier. I have no problem have with the people problem who the work people at the Courier. Courier because I totally think we should have local newspaper, oh, yeah. and I know it's a yeah. it's a dying I think they do industry, a good, a but really it shouldn't good job. be. And I, it's like libraries, you know, like yeah. people think it's li- it's dying, but then you start to realize the value in it. Mm-hmm. We. I see now, as I'm getting older, the value in a local oh, yeah. newspaper. It is not the people who work there. It is your owners. It's the people who have taken over the newspaper who are who are killing it. Right. The fact that they moved all of this stuff uh, out of Evansville, like to get it printed in Louisville. Have you heard of anything dumber than to take equipment we already had set up in Evansville to print these papers? You disassemble it, put it in Louisville... Then take all of your intro, your news stories, send them to, to Louisville, have them print it, and then ship them all back. I cannot think of anything that we've done around here that's dumber than that. This should be a local newspaper that the community supports. Now, if the community is not supporting it, downsize it a little bit. Sure. But don't sell out and... and Ugh, it's just so frustrating because now we're not putting local stuff in there anymore. It's owned by people who don't give a shit about Evansville. And they're the people who are working there, who are trying to do something for the community, have to answer to somebody outside of the community. Now, I don't know all of the details, clearly. I could be completely wrong about some of this. This right. is the impression that I am getting. Right. And impression means a lot. No, it does. And, you know, if does. this is the... If this is the reputation of the newspaper to somebody like me, then it's probably the reputation that they've got going for a lot of people. Right. And it's extremely frustrating that we, for one, that the community couldn't support its own newspaper for very long. 
And then in two, that instead of it going away, it's just sold out. And now it's... Yeah. It's not an Evansville newspaper. It's somebody else. It's something else. Yeah, it's frustrating because I know there's a lot of good people that work there and like the digital stuff they're doing or they were doing like with N- the Noah Stubbs and Zach Evans were doing and uh, I don't know the articles that John Webb does. Is, he's got a humorous take on a lot of things and like a lot of opinion pieces, which are they're useful. And then to, to have Dr. McLeod's cartoons that are that they don't get picked up as much because they get, they can pull from this national yeah. resource, but they don't get the local vibe as much as we mm-hmm. used to. And that's a real, this, those are real issues that, I mean, it this takes away from stuff. Yeah. This city's big enough to, to create its oh, own yeah. news. Um, and you know, maybe some days are less and some days are more, but then you just kind of, yeah. you should be able to, you know, sort of, expand and contract as necessary instead right. of trying to shove too much into something and I don't know. I'm it's very frustrating and like I said I love my city but I also hate my city at the same time there are just things sure. that are extremely frustrating and I want I want that watchdog out there I want the you know want the courier to be a living breathing entity that can say hey this is screwed up in the city or that you know this is good in the city or whatever but it it's like the USA Today, since they the USA Today people, the Gannett or whatever they're called, yeah. owns them. Then they're, we push more of the national stuff or the mm-hmm. indie. We get more indie stories now. I don't, I don't really. Care. I don't care about indie. I don't care. They're. I mean, they don't care about us. We don't care about them. Well, there I mean, used to be. It used to be um, media really served as a, as like you said a watchdog. It was like a system of checks and balances. Yeah. They could hold. Um, government, um, corporations, even individuals accountable because, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, uh, that affects the public, the public's going to need to hear about it. Right. And, um, and, and we need that on the local, in the local scene. And that's what yeah. part of the problem is with the world that we live in now, everything is so globally connected. Um, people have forgotten that, um, like, what goes on locally is way more significant, I think, than it is, than mm. they than they consider it, than they treat it. Um, and so that's a big part of the problem. And we don't sure. now who's holding anybody around here accountable. And yes, the quality wasn't quite there on some of the stuff with some of the local reporting, but it could have been, you know, and, and that's part of it. we, we also, as citizens who purchase the paper, can hold the paper accountable for quality and stuff. And that's the way it yeah. should be. It's a, all a, a system of checks and balances all within um, within the family. You know what I mean? It's like our community should be holding our community um, to certain standards, not selling out to some other com- company from without, you know, somewhere who's yeah. out there. Telling us what, you know, what our news so, is. It's so hard to know, too, because, you know, like people, like, if you're not buying papers, then how are you supporting these journalists? And then you do have to get these outside. Inf- so it's 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 a catch-22. And there are I don't little know. towns it's, it's out there with 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 people that have their own newspapers. Yeah. Doing great things. I mean, yeah, but here we are at our metro area is like... Close to three hundred thousand, if not more, and we can't even have, yeah. we can't even sustain our own news. It's yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and I think that's that's probably a common problem where a lot of people don't, a lot of newspaper areas don't know what they're going to do because with the internet and the whole free web that's and the whole, you know, but it's that's like, how what do you, you do? adjust to yeah. the demands but of then the community. How do you pay for the journalists and how do you, you know, because they're they're not going to do their job for free and. You know, and then you have people like bloggers show up or podcasters that show up that are doing it for free. That's true. And then why would you pay for the paper when you can get this information for free? And but then it's like it's all opinion pieces at that point. So I don't know. It's it's a whole it's a whole there question. There is a pendulum swing, I think, though, on um, the way we've been accepting just anything in from social media. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know, like. There are first responders, like people out there who are really gathering stuff and they're on the scene and they're reporting things and it's not even their job. They're just some average dude 
who just happens to know some scoop and share it with us. But that has gotten so uh, bloated and now everyone is trying to say things and there's too much noise and you don't know who to trust and people are full of crap that I think the pendulum is starting to swing back again to where even if you're on social media, um, that we're starting to hold some higher standards to our sources. Not everybody, but there's a definitely a trend in that direction of understanding that a lot of this stuff is fake or fluff um, and that we need to get back to that um, credibility and knowing who your source is. And so I, I think it's, it's going to start to come back yeah. again in that area. Well, well, what do you think about, I mean, there's like Evans a watch, for example. Mm-hmm. Like if you found out, if you like, there was, you heard some gunshots, like I've done this. I've heard gunshots or something. I've heard something in the area. I don't know if they're gunshots. Maybe it's a, who knows what it is, firecrackers. I don't know. Where do you go? Do you go to the courier first? Do you go to channel 14? Do you go to channel 25, 44? Where do you go? Or do you go to Evansville Watch first? Well, see, the thing about Evansville Watch is that it's not just, it's not like just, you know, the that crazy woman who's like, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, like yeah. there's a fire. It's, they're listening to police scanners and, and right. just reporting it with no, there's no, not supposed to be anything subjective on there. Right. Occasionally I'll see them throw in some sort of opinion. Sure. Which is a little annoying, but yeah, I do like that system. But the thing is, they're doing that totally free. They're, they're not getting any, there's zero monies. They're not even, they're very rarely even sponsored. Yeah, and that Which makes is a absolutely weird thing. no sense. That makes no sense on, on a whole other level. But that's undermining traditional news sources at that point. Mm-hmm. Because but they're doing no it for detail. free. True. But no you're going reporting. to Evans a Watch. You're going like, oh, here's this. I'm going there on Facebook or I'm going on Twitter. And I'm looking at their stuff. And I'm saying, they're my first instinct is to go to them because they're listening to the police scanners. Mm-hmm. Where I'm not going to a traditional news source. To find out what their thing is, because they're probably not even reporting it until they have verified sources and all that stuff. So it's undermining them, and they're doing it for, if not free, a very small amount of money compared to what the newspaper needs to make money to exist. Yeah. So, and in those cases, I, and I know it doesn't work out. It's not. This is all just you know, like in a perfect world scenarios, but. Like I said, it's something with the community should be able to support its own. Um, And so that is the problem. The community needs to be supporting that. And I hate to say it, but a lot of that comes from advertising. But it can also be in in the way that, you know, like WNIN has their kind of, you know, like it's partnered with such and such. Like there are huge corporations around here that could do a lot of sponsorship. But then with news, it gets a little tricky because you don't want to be owned by a sponsor. Yeah, if a sponsor, because then they have their, you can't say anything. Like if Vectron's sponsoring you, you can't necessarily go, hey, Vectron rates suck. Yeah, that's true. Man, it's it's tricky. So it's very tricky. I I really don't know because, I mean, that's, that's how media runs... On a national level, yeah. Though. So I can't I'm not say I have that any there's. Answers. I know. <laughs> so I don't know how a na- a, a local, right? And how then, a local newspaper should be supported locally, and unfortunately, with anything that means through um, advertising, right? I mean, it would be anytime. Like literally, everyone asks me, like almost literally everyone. It's like, how do you make money on the podcast? And a, I say, I don't. But, we know. but B, you know, like occasionally we take a sponsor, but then it's like, I don't necessarily want a big sponsor because then you're beholden to the yeah. sponsor. We just want enough to pay for the equipment. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, but anybody, no, anybody. And, and if you want to donate, there's a PayPal account you can send. Uh, so we don't want to lose money. Check on the this. website. Evansillepodcast.com. Give us um, uh, $5 for every time you've <laughs> laughed. Right. Please. Uh, but I don't even remember where I was going with that. But no, no, the, uh, but yeah, you can't, I don't know. It's just going forward. I don't know what the model is because, you know, we can't, you know, like there's days when I think 
I could totally create something that could compete with any media company in this city. And then there's days when I think I should totally quit this podcast. <laughs> so it, it just depends on what day I wake up. But uh, things are things are a changing, as Anchorman yeah. says. And, and I will say that the uh, the newspaper could totally do with a whole lot fewer people running it. I think they, I think they're there. I, I think, know. I think they keep dropping people. So, yeah, I think they're getting there. Actually, and it, I mean that stinks, but at some point you got to realize that your job is. I mean, the news kind of comes think, at you. I think it's so hard to get a good quality reporter, and I think that we do have those for the paper. Then we need to get a good the, quality the editor. The fact that we don't have. I mean, maybe they don't get paid enough and then they leave and that's part of the problem. But then how do you get paid advertising? But then how do you get to advertising if you don't want to be owned by someone? And is there any other way? Subscription rates? No, people aren't going to pay for anything. Damn, this is tricky. People aren't going to pay for anything because Uh, everything's free on the internet. You're not going to put up. Like any time that stupid thing shows up and says you have so many free articles this month on the couriercompress.com. And I go, yeah, I know my way around this. I'm not paying for anything. And I'm sorry, Noah and Zach, <laughs> that I that I know a trick that can get around not paying for your salaries. Um, I'll buy you a beer next time I see you. That's but, uh, tricky. A beer won't pay for their electricity. I know, right? Which is st- but but the, but then you can't tell me that any that every consumer is going to feel guilty enough to pay for their own media and then we get all this crappy fake Russian news stories so it's a whole cycle and I don't know where the end is I don't know does it get it's it's a tough question because I don't I really have zero I have zero uh, answers for this because it I mean it has to say private and independent yeah so you can't have a government run uh, news as, as Mike Pence wants to do we've, or wanted to we've do. Seen <laughs> countries do that, and, and yeah, we don't well, want they, that. They don't go well. Uh, and is I mean, Twitter's kind of a government run if you just pay attention to certain accounts. Maybe they should sell cocaine. Maybe, maybe we need a separate. <laughs> yeah, we are in Evansville, guys. Uh, Courier, uh, if you want to do meth. Or heroin. Don't do it. Sell I mean, it. not do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. sell it. Sell heroin or meth. That might be your option. Man. Um, yeah, like some sort of side gig. Yeah. Um, how much should they do cheerleading versus negative news too? Like, should they be promoting Evansville as a news organization? Or should it be saying this is what sucks about Evansville? Or should it there be a balance? Shouldn't be an opinion at all. If something's going on. Talk about it. Um, there's unfortunately most news is reactionary, and really that is the big difference. It's not necessarily like this. It's you know like this bad versus this good. It's usually this bad thing happened, and hey, this good thing is going to happen. Right. So that's really what well, separates they, it is I mean, what they, happened versus what's going to happen. I guess they've been better at getting. Getting stuff out of what's going to happen. It used to be the joke was we would be like, we'd find out about something that just happened. <laughs> we were like, yeah. oh, that would have been nice to know about. So that's how maybe the news should be separated is, you know, what happened versus what's going to happen. And just try to keep it as objective as you can. Right. But if they want to say like, hey, Evansville has this huge heroin problem. They should totally be talking about that. They We shouldn't be hiding that. That's the whole reason why we want the newspaper. Right. Right. But saying like, hey, TEDx happened. Yeah, that does not do anybody any good. TEDx right. Which I'll, I'll say, to be fair, like uh, John Martin, he, he had an article that said, hey, TEDx is happening. Here are the speakers. Yeah. I mean, he That's they good. did a good job with that. I think that they promoted it more. But they shouldn't be the in... I mean, they shouldn't have to promote things. It's not like the newspaper's job is to and, be a promotion just, tool. It's not just a promotion, though. That's That's a... Big thing for Evansville. There's a lot of potential for that. And it, it's, I don't know, it's also branding. And it's within their, I mean, it's it's in their best interest to promote Evansville yeah. also because that's where they get their bread and butter. Their yeah, I think the more about. that they would promote things that are happening, the more people will tune in because they'll be like, 
I need to know what's going on. Yeah, and fear of mis- missing out. Yeah, and people so will pay money for the that. The fact that they know that things are happening will lead them to more. And eyeballs. hey, maybe that's where the money comes from too. Is that part of the yeah. newspaper is the promotional side of this? This event is happening. This is going on. Um, because there, who cares if you've got advertisers? Um, but then use that money to promote the completely independent side of this is what happened um, and this is what's going on in Evansville. So that could be a thing. I don't know. If I knew, they'd hire me. Yeah, I just kind of always wonder because it's like you want to... It's similar to the problem we have. I have on the podcast where it's like people want to talk about what they're doing but I don't necessarily want to always be a promotional tool, you know? Mm. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> you oh, look done. Done. Okay. Done. We'll finish this bottle tomorrow. Hmm. <laughs> Wild turkey. Cool. Well, thank you. You've given me enough material for seven days. Yeah, you're welcome. I have excellent insight. Good job, everybody. <laughs>